Hey, I'm Decathlon Gamer. Welcome back to Pro Cycling Measure 2019 Career Mode, episode number 91. Last time out, we wrapped up the Giro d'Italia with victory, which was freaking amazing. And thanks to our performance there, we've accumulated a total prize money of $424,960. Consider our finances dealt with. We're, we are good to go this season and into the next just from that. Uh, Phillipson, not his best. He's not feeling well. This was five days ago. And I still haven't had an update on what's going on with uh, Phillipson. And he's not even marked as not being okay. So uh, maybe he's over it. Maybe I missed the message. Uh, we do have an equipment test that was also done. So let's check that out. And this is the C50. It's worse. <laughs> it's worse than what they had. Yeah, that's not good. <laughs> Next up for us, oh, two races. Not going to do this one, though. Uh, Yuri Gottwald is on the list of favorites, so let's see how he does. Claims third place. Small group of five there at the finish. For us, though, next up is the... Criterium de Dauphiné, six kilometer prologue, totally flat to open the race. This game has a really bad habit of doing this. Our best chance in the stage is Mads Peterson, who's a 79 prologuer. But they send him out first. I understand that Philipson is the team leader for this race, but Mats Peterson should have been at least, you know, the next one to go, not the first, uh, you know, not the first. <laughs> and so judging the effort level required is a real challenge. And it looks like I've gone a hair too hard. And now we slow down in the final meters. We end up one second off the pace because he ran out of energy 50 meters before the end and really slowed down. Uh, he's the only one who's actually going to be up there on time, so let's go ahead and uh, we could already put this down as we have not won this stage. I would have imagine that Peterson will hold on to a top 10 spot most likely uh, but that's going to be about it I'll see you for the next stage final 12 and a half K we're actually still pulling in the breakaway group but that's the five riders just around the corner from us Daniel already starting to move into position we're moving early just in case 11 K to go now Daniel's gel's kicked in. We should see Bennett's kicking in here in a moment. Get Ooms ready on that. There we go. Bennett's is kicking in. Okay, we'll go 97s now. It's 8.5k. Under 7k to go. See, Daniel's still hanging out pretty well here. Riders are falling off the back. It's not a 5k. Going a bad patch. The riders are entering the last five kilometers of the stage. Get those gels going. All right, full 99s. 4k to go. Here we go. Towards the finish. 3k to go. Booms give us a little acceleration. Now Peterson. 2k to go. One and a half. 1k. 
And Phillipson. Oh, he got held up a little. Oh, he overcomes. Okay. <laughs> he comes clear. Single down second. Cockard third. Garcia Cortina fourth. Kinsani. Brian took eighth. Godry ninth. Peterson eleventh. Big gaps here. But of course, the field. You know, they're they're all gonna get same time. These guys are miles behind. They're they're almost a minute down. They're almost a minute down. There's not gonna be a time gap. It's not like they missed a few seconds, right? These guys were way behind. We get a stage win, just like that. And everybody on the same time, other than the one rider who was dropped well, well before the finish. This is an objective of ours. It is. Stage win. Objective done. Just about takes us to last of the year. We've got two objectives left. Tour de Suisse, Tour de France. Both stage wins. And the last two objectives, other than the Giro, which just finished, uh, were stage wins, and we've already accomplished both of those. Really, all that's left this season to ride for necessarily is the Tour de France, uh, where we're obviously going to bring a sprint team. I think for me, the big thing is not getting the stage win. I want the points classification. So we'll get a $25,000 budget increase heading into next season, almost guaranteed now. Uh, but of course, we are at a bigger deficit than that currently. Uh, but finances-wise, kind of in a position where I feel like we could actually outspend ourselves a little bit next season. Continue to uh, increase the squad a bit. Just formed up our train, and most of the guys are over on this side, so we'll try to pull through this way. Uh, last stage, like this stage. Well, I, actually, it was two stages ago now. We had, we had a punchy stage in between. We've had the similar negative race day conditions for most of the riders. Heavy winds. Uh, heavy winds, we've had aggressive uh, warm temperatures that have made it pretty difficult. And each time, Godry, Brian, Philipson have had minus threes or have had minus ones. Each time. And we've actually split the peloton already uh, with plenty of kilometers still to go. And we slowed down there for a moment. But, I mean, we're already a half a minute ahead of the, the chase groups. And despite that, we're still going to end up everyone same time. Uh, which is a little bit ridiculous that you open things up to no avail over and over again. Three and a half K... I'm going to try to open it up even further. By Mads hey, I said sprint. Come on now. Brian was laid out 1.4k. There's the one kilometer to go. And here comes Philipson. Whoa! Milano, Vanderhorn, took off a little early. And there you go. We beat out Cockard, Eve Lampart. Brian takes 6th, Peterson 7th, Godry 8th, 
huge gap. It's almost a minute <laughs> behind us. 57 seconds till everyone else comes in. That's not a small gap, and that's not a three kilometer gap either. Leave those guys behind at 10, 12 kilometers out, and yet they all get it same time. Beat them to the finish line by a minute, and they still get same time. And just in case you missed them, here are the race highlights. It's one thing if it happens in the last 3K. <gasps> Oh my goodness! They didn't get same time. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, Peterson's in six. It, it doesn't put it into the race lead. I, it has no bearing. It's just shocking to actually see that happen for a change. Uh, Phillipson leads the points classification. Four stages to go, but a couple of them are big climbing stages and a very long time trial uh, coming up. We're not really built for any of those. What we came here for was the sprints and the stage victories, and we've been perfect in that for now. Uh, here's a quick sim. Got walled in good form. It is punchy. Will he get a decent result here? No. No, he does not. So we've already done what we've come to do. I think we need to really move on to the Tour de Swiss. I don't need to spend all my time on this without... Peterson's a good prologger, but he's not a great time trialer. None of these guys are. We're not competing for the GC, so for a rare instance, I'll let them be. Let them do their thing, even though Peterson is in the top 10. Two big climbing stages to come, and he's a terrible climber. He takes third on the stage, which actually puts him second overall behind Demoulin at this point. But again, the next two stages going to shatter that. Let's go ahead and push forward to our uh, our next selection of riders, which is now just a day away. So dossiers will be next. Only six points available, so it's Hard to do much at this point. Uh, Pajikar is a 76. He's just 22 years of age. It's five points. He's a puncher, but he's actually really both. He's a climber as well. Uh, I think that's a strong, strong addition to what we're potentially going after. So add Pajikar to the list. And then we have one point remaining. Sprinter. A one point sprinter, actually, and just 21 years of age. Don't mind if I do. In terms of progress, we're making a decent amount of progress with a lot of these guys. Uh, Garcia Cortina is nearly 200%, so we'd get maximum boost there. Uh, Scott Davies, when did we add him? Uh, just at the start of the month, he made an 8% improvement already. Just 14 to go for him. Uh, Martinez is making good progress. Hagita is making good progress. Uh, really, the only one who's struggling to go anywhere is Felons, but we just got him signed on. So, I'd say overall, we're doing pretty dang good with everyone we're going after currently. Meaning, we're going to have some good choices when it comes to the signing period. Alright, so Tour de Swiss is starting off. It opens with a 9k prologue. 
This time we are focused on GC with the team that we're bringing here. Riding with McNulty, 75 time trial, 74 prologue, so basically a 74. And with Owen, I went up just a little too hard. It does go uphill towards the finish, so it burns more energy uh, quite quickly, as short as this prologue is. So it's really important to save a little bit for the end. Uh, Owen ran out a bit early and went from... 15 seconds at the check to a minute two at the finish. So he lost probably 30 seconds over that short stretch. So McNulty, we come out just a little bit slower. He's in seventh at 13 seconds. And we're saving that energy now for this uphill. Let's see how quickly that's burning. I barely sped up. Actually, we need to go back down to this 80, so yeah, I think the 80 was the right thing to do here. All right, that's much better. Second place, 31 seconds behind Cliff Stubbs. Oscon just went quicker by a second. He's in a good spot. Going to go ahead and jump over to a time lapse while we go through the next four riders and we'll slow it down again uh, partway through a Vettipol's ride. out on course this is mostly prologue so even though he's in 81 time trial the 76 prologue is the main contributor got walled a solid second place he was an 82 prologue he had a plus four to his race day condition Venipol saved a little bit here we're gonna step it up somewhat just for a moment i think the 81 is really the way to go. It will drain that energy pretty quick through this area. I think he's headed for a pretty good time. Certainly top 10. If we can get him top 5 maybe. I know 700 meters. Accelerate to the end. 6th. 18 seconds. Still a few riders to go though. Kwiatkowski, 7th. He's one second ahead of Kwiatkowski. Latour shouldn't be up there. How is he in 10th? Oh, Rowan Dennis takes the lead on same time as Stubbs. Carapaz, Kung, 5 seconds down. Pollitt, 10th. Youngles, 18th. Sagan, 70th and Alaphilippe. All right, so Rowan Dennis takes the stage, or is it Stubbs? We'll find out here in a second. They always screw on that. Nope, not here. <laughs> Rowan Dennis gets it. So it's so weird how the game does that. It tells you you win, and then it gives it to the other rider if you're on same time. Here, same time, but no, he keeps it. Uh, so Rowan Dennis ahead of Stubbs. Kung is third. Gottwald did manage to take fourth, so he's in a pretty strong position. And there is a Venipole also in a good position. Eighth place, 19 seconds. Looking around us, most of these guys are time trialists. Kuhn has good stamina. Doesn't climb well. It's true to Swiss. There should be some pretty big climbing stages. Rowan Dennis will get dropped. Stubbs, I don't even know. Uh, Berg, time trial only. Uh, Boley, time trial only. So... Uh, really, Kwiatkowski 
is the one we got to watch out for uh, surrounding us in the standings. But otherwise, I think we're in a pretty solid state position to start this race. About 40k to go. Pace is really hot. There's only four riders in the break. They only have a minute and a half lead. We've got this looping course that we're on with two climbs that we're doing three times each. We've done the first two sets. That last time, a lot of riders just making it over, and quite a few of the peloton were dropped on that climb. And I expect that we're going to lose some guys this time through, so I will not have my full team over the top. But I do expect a lot of the team should be okay. So um, Mater looks like he's about to go out the back. Owen's going to go out the back this time. The pack is increasing its work rate. Some teams can't be happy with the breakaway. Not dropped yet, but I think they're going to lose contact here. Yes, they do. Set those guys both to auto. And how we do it up here. So uh, with that, we've got Barta needs to protect Gottwald. Either's going to protect uh, McNulty. Venipol's going to be fine on this climb. 68 left in the peloton. Yeah, those guys aren't coming back. Hey there, come on, you got this, you got this. Hangs on. 56 left in the peloton. They dropped 10 more just there at the top of the climb. Hey there, just hangs on. Doesn't join those 10. No breakaway, but here comes two riders, Valens and Bowman. Got a little punchy finish. Gottwald's going to go for that part of it. Evenepoel, though, and McNulty protected for the overall, meaning we only have two lead-out riders, and uh, this is... Ah, crap. Okay. Change plans. We now protect the overall. Oh, it's 6k to go. Only five kilometers left. Neither stay to the side here. Three K, come on, Bartha. Come on, Bartha. He's not riding. He's just cruising. One point one K. It's a good place to be. Uh, and we've caught him. Nolte. About everybody. Nolte's got a little sprint left, but there goes Alaphilippe being, you know, Alaphilippe. <laughs> Valen's going with him. Looks like we're going to have third place. We do. Third is good. And we could be seeing some time gaps here. Maybe. It's awfully packed in. Those 53 riders or so. Looks like they want to give Alaphilippe and Valens a time gap over everybody else, but none of the time gaps that exist behind us, which were bigger than that one. Gottwald was only a few seconds behind Valens. Maybe two. That's a very small gap where it was 10, 12 seconds behind us. Which is still a pretty small gap. No, same time, okay. Same time all through that first 50, nine riders. 
So Rowan Dennis still leads. Cliff Stubbs is still here. Gottwald is third. Adds Verts fourth. Uh, Venipole is now fifth. So a few riders are dropped out, but only a few. Dauphiné just has the one stage left to go. That was the first two stages of the Tour de Suisse. Last stage for the Dauphiné could be Philipson. I think we might be able to get him there. I mean, these first two climbs aren't going to hurt as much. This one, slightly. That's not going to be an easy one, and then the long uphill from it won't be easy. But if we can get him there, Philipson could definitely win. I just don't have much in terms of climbing support for that final stage. And I don't quite know where we're at in the uh, sprint classification. I guess we can check real quick. There it is, Dauphiné, Sprints, Dumoulin and I are level on points. So, yes, he is very much in contention for the points classification. Peterson is hanging on to 11th, by the way, overall. So he's got a nice little chance at a top 10 but it's going to be hard to drop anybody so it looks like we'll finish up the final stage of the Dauphiné on camera because there is something to ride for and then we'll be focusing on the remaining stages of the Tour de Suisse which of course we're now two stages into that race and we still have I'd say a good 30 contenders uh, with a few stages to go. Of course, realistically, it's just a handful. But that's going to do it for this episode of Decathlon Gamer. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to hit that like button, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there, and bye for now.